God is so good. And today, I, um, if you've got your paper, you understand that we're going to talk about pornography this morning. And pornography is a very real issue and a very sensitive topic in the church. And it's an issue that a lot of pastors would not touch with a 10-foot pole. And um, our church staff and our pastoral staff is very adamant about preaching truth and living truth. Amen. And so we're, we're really excited and I'm really excited today to be able to bring, bring this word to you. And I don't want you to, I want you to understand there, there needs to be an atmosphere and a sense and a vibe in the air that there's freedom in this place. And that was one of the reasons why we pulled that list together this morning and we were singing freedom and, and we we're singing freedom reigns and Holy Spirit, you're welcome here because there needs to be um, this sense, this almost aroma in the atmosphere of forgiveness and aroma of, of freedom that needs to be displayed today. And um, I want you to understand just how re real this issue is. It's an issue that I deal with and my wife and I deal with. Uh, on a regular basis with students in our youth ministries, with parents, and we have questions many, many times uh, of individuals who just wanna know some resources and some ways to deal with this very real sin. Somebody say it's a sin. It is a sin. This very real sin that is very and highly addictive in the homes today and I'm believing this, that not only is God going to set free the individual today, but there is going to become freedom and liberty displayed in homes all across Richmond and the surrounding areas because of what happens in, in this service today. And I want you to understand this, it's your choice. You do have a choice. You have a choice in every decision that you make, um, taking part in any sin that you take part in, we all have propensities to sin and we have these, these, these things that draw us in more than other sins, right? We have these issues that kind of, we engage in issues that, that really tug at our spirits a lot more than other issues. And today it just so happens that we're going to deal with this particular topic. The reason why I've entitled this message Primetime Porn is because Pornography has really went prime time. It really has. Everywhere we look in society today, there is some type of sexual innuendo, some type of soft porn thrown in our faces, and really many of us have become desensitized to it and numb to the issue of pornography. In a sense, maybe you, you don't necessarily watch and, 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 I, and I wanted, I'm not trying to be graphic this morning, but we kind of really do need to address this issue in a, in a raw and near almost abrasive manner. But, but it's not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to watch the act of intercourse taking place to be looking at pornography. Pornography can be looking at the Sears catalog, it can be engaging in, in, in things on social media, having an image flash across your screen that you take a second look at, and now you're lusting and partaking in this thing we call pornography. I wanna give you some startling statistics this morning, and on your sheet that you have, I wanna kinda of go down through and cherry pick some of these issues and some of these statistics that we're going to kind of bring to the forefront of today's message. And these issues are very real, these statistics are very real, but I want you to see this firsthand, just how Pornography has went prime time. See, just a few short years ago, the porn industry reached a, a, its peak in revenue, making 57 billion worldwide. 12 billion in the United States alone each year. Adult videos make 20 billion in a year. Escort services made 11 billion a year. Adult magazines made $7.5 billion a year. Sex clubs, 5 billion a year. Adult phone services, 4.5 billion a year. Pay-per-view television, 2.5 billion a year. Internet sex, 2.5 billion a year. And sex on CDs, 1.5 billion a year. Church, pornography has went prime time. Prime time. 60% of all website visits are sexual to nature. 2.5 billion emails per day are porn pornographic to nature. 
More than 300 million X-rated videos are distributed each year, and sex is the number one topic searched on the internet today. The number one topic searched on the internet today. There are over 800 million rentals each year of adult videos and DVDs. There are more porn outlets today than there are McDonald's. The porn revenue is larger than all pro football, baseball, and basketball franchises. The porn revenue exceeds the, comp, the combined revenue of both ABC, NBC, and CBS. Child pornography generates $3 billion annually, and the U.S. Customs Services estimates that there are over 100,000 websites offering child pornography. It's when prime time. Approximately 40 million people in the U.S. are sexually involved with the internet. Young people are the largest consumers of pornography from age 12 to 17. And you wonder why this is a topic that has been heavy on my heart. Christians in a survey said 47% of Christians said that pornography is a problem in the home. You look at further down porn in the church 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women say that they watch porn at least once a month. 75% of pastors do not make themselves accountable to anyone for their internet use. We'll go down a little bit further for teens. Nine out of 10 boys are exposed to pornography before the age of 18. Nine out of 10 boys are exposed to pornography before 18. Somebody say, my God. On average, the first exposure to pornography among men is 12 years old. 71% of teens hide their online behavior from their parents. That's, that's including Christians. 71%, Jesus. 28% of 16 and 17 year olds have been unintentionally exposed to porn online. We'll go down a little bit further to 39% of boys and 23% of girls have seen sexual bondage online. 83% of boys and 57% of girls have seen group sex online. And 69% of boys and 55% of girls have seen same-sex intercourse online. Jesus. With young adults, how many of you have college students? Raise your hand, that's you or you're about to, <laughs> and in just a couple short years. 61, or sorry, one in five 18 to 24 year olds have sent a sext message. Students who have had sex are five times more likely than virgins to be involved in sexting. 64% of college men, 18% of college women spend time online for internet sex weekly. Politically, this was an interesting one, politically, liberal people are 19% more likely to look at porn. 68% of young men and 18% of women use porn at least once a week. It's one prime time. Let's look at porn and marriage. 61% of happily married men are 61% less likely to look at porn. Those with teen children are 45% less likely to look at pornography. 68% of divorce cases involved one party meeting a new lover on the internet. 68%, wow. 56% of divorce cases have involved one party having an obsessive interest in pornography. Men, this is, this is, this is so crazy. Men are more than 543% more likely to look at pornography than women. Whew. Wow, right? 70% of wives of sex addicts could be diagnosed with PTSD. Jesus. Pornography is what prime time. Let's kind of jump into to this message this morning, and I want to give you, first off, two truths to an addiction to pornography, and as you're taking notes, I want you to, to, to hear some of these scripture references, because everything that I tell you this morning is going to be backed up by the infallible word of Almighty God. An addiction to pornography, this is the first truth, an addiction to pornography is hard to break. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 19 says, So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. And this is very important that you catch this church. Having lost all, somebody say all. all. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. See, this is what happens. You, you engage in, in something. You give something a second look. and You have this idea in your mind that it's all right, and you write it off, and before you know it, it's snowball effect. You've become numb to it, and you're looking at more and more and more and more, and you got to have more and more and more, and no longer was, was that type of pornography good enough for you, but you're advancing to the, the more graphic stages of pornography, and it's becoming more and more and more of an issue. That's what the Bible says. The Bible backs this up. Having lost all sensitivity, they gave themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. Church, not only is an addiction to pornography hard to break, it causes chaos. Chaos. The FBI conducted a research investigation involving 36 serial murders, and the research revealed that 81%, 29 out of the 36 reported pornography is one of their highest sexual interests. The most common denominator of 29% of 80, or I'm sorry, 29 out of the 36, 81%. Common denominator, the most common interest of a serial murder, a profile characteristic of a serial murder is an addiction to pornography. It's what prime time and it causes chaos. This makes pornography that much more susceptible to chaos. Detective William Dorn of the LA Police Department, he estimates that of the 700 child molesters whose arrests that he participated in, in 10 years, 10 years span of his tenor, more than half had had child pornography in their possession and 80% of them had some type of pornography in their possession. So 81% of, uh, of serial murderers had pornography in their possession, and 80% of child molesters have had pornography in their possession. Church, it causes chaos. Chaos. I wanna give you five keys this morning as you're taking notes to freedom from pornography. And if you're here this morning and you have some type of sexual addiction that you I've engaged in and you've written it off or maybe your spouse has written it off or maybe your spouse don't, doesn't even know. Or you're here this morning and your parents don't know and you're a student and, and you have an addiction and a lust issue. My hope for you and my prayer is not to bring any type of condemnation, but to let the Holy Spirit convict. I, I believe this, that God is gonna set free some individuals, there's gonna be freedom displayed in families, but not only that, I think sometimes we are on the verge of breaking through this spiritual barrier. And I wonder if it's your sin that's holding us back. I wonder if it's your sin that you've hidden in the closet. I wonder if it's your sin that you tuck away in the shadows of your life that nobody needs to know about that's holding us back. What sin in the camp is causing us not to break through as a church. Let's go to this first key to freedom from pornography. The first key is this, you must bring it into the open. You have to admit you have a problem. I want you to understand this, this is something you probably should write down. Secrecy is a breeding ground for bondage. Hmm. Secrecy is a breeding ground for bondage. Staying up late at night on the computer, a different portion of your home. Spending time late in the office. With nobody around. Sitting somewhere with the privacy of your cell phone or your tablet. 
where nobody can see you. Secrecy is a breeding ground for bondage. Ephesians, if we're, if we're gonna go to this, for, sorry, John chapter three, verse 19 through 21. It says this, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Do you catch that? Follow this with me for just a moment. This is God's word. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. The Bible, the Holy Spirit, God's hand is intended to shine in the dark places of our lives and bring our sin into the open. That's what God's goal in life is to do, is to help surface the sins and the propensities to sins in our life, bring those to the surface, shine light on those things so that they're exposed, so that they can't creep in and hide and reproduce. Secrecy is a breeding ground for bondage. Everyone who does evil hates the light, but will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. And this is, this is really good. You got to catch this. But whoever lives by truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly what they have done. What they have done has been done in the sight of God. I'm going to put it to you like this. Are you, have you ever been at home and you get a phone call and it's like you're one of your relatives or family member or friend, and they're like, hey, we're five minutes out. We just want to stop by and see you, right? That ever happened to anybody in this place? And what do you do? As soon as you hang up your phone, you like start cleaning, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. You, look, <laughs> you get the vacuum out immediately. You run to the closet and you start cleaning. You start dusting and you're cleaning up dishes. And you're like, oh man, I got three minutes left. And you're trying to take the dishes out of the sink and you're throwing dirty dishes on top of clean dishes and you're tucking dirty clothes in the closet with the clean clothes and you're just doing everything you can. You're throwing stuff in the stove that doesn't belong there and, and, and you're just doing everything you can. By the time the doorbell rings, you open the door and you smile real nice. They walk in and they say, you just clean, you keep such a clean house. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. And you're so modest about it. Right? See, deep down inside, there might be some dirt in your closets and junk in your closets. And the Holy Spirit today is wanting to shine light on those deep, dark places of your life. Even if it's not pornography, if it's a pride issue, if it's an anger issue, God, you're here today. Will you just move? Holy Spirit, would you just move and have your way? Number two, the, the second key to freedom from pornography is this. You have to make a covenant with your eyes not to look lustfully at another. You have to make a covenant with your eyes not to look lustfully at another. What that means is learning to bounce your eyes. Has anybody ever heard of that phrase, learning to bounce your eyes? It means when something tempting or something that could possibly cause you to lust or stumble comes in your line of sight, you immediately bounce your eyes away from it, right? You've been there, you see somebody, some shorty, jogging down the street, and you're at that stoplight, and you take that second glance, young man, it's time to learn to bounce your eyes. Make a covenant, make an agreement, make a binding agreement with the Lord that I will not look when I'm tempted to look twice. I will not take that second look. See, Job 31.1 says, I've made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a woman. We must learn to take every thought captive as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself self up against the knowledge of God and we take every thought captive and we make it obedient to Christ. See, that means when a thought comes into your mind that you know it isn't right, you must take it captive and not dwell on it. I, I, I look at it like this. Has anybody ever seen the show 24? I'm like big into like 24, the unit. They were pretty cool, cool shows. But it's like Jack Bauer taking a terrorist, right? And probing him for information. And, and this is what God wants you to do is take every thought captive before it's released, before it manifests itself in the physical realm, before it comes out of your mouth. If you, if you have a propensity to swear, God wants you to take that thought captive before it's released. 
If you have a propensity to look twice, God wants you to take that thought captive and grind it in and make it obedient to Christ, make it obedient to the word of God. That means this, and I saw this very, 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 very quickly at my father-in-law's house. We would be watching a television show and we would be, this was before Keelan and I was even married, we would watch a television show or watching a commercial and something tempting would come across the screen immediately, he had his hand on the button. You don't know that. Sitting there with the remote control, something tempting comes on the screen, fast forward right now. Right now. Don't wait. And many of us have paused and looked and have rewound it to look. But I love that that man of God has such an example of what it should be like when you're watching a program on the television or when you're, uh, when you're watching com a commercial and something tempting comes across the screen, he's immediately bouncing his eyes. Thank God for a holy pastor. Amen. Thank God for a godly pastor. But some people think that there's nothing wrong with window shopping. Pastor Dylan, I, I'm just looking. I ain't touch. I'm just looking at the menu, right? I'm not ordering anything. I, 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 I'm just looking. I'm not touching. You could be further from, so, so far from the truth. Matthew chapter five, verse 28, this is God's standards compared to ours. But I tell you this, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her or sexual immorality with her in his heart. You see this church? Pornography is one prime time. You don't have to touch, you can, you can just look at the, the menu, but you're sinning. You know, it seems to me like I, like I might be picking on the men a little bit, so I wanna to talk to the ladies for just a moment. And you may think, well, pastor, my body's my body, and I can do with my body whatever I want, and well, you're wrong. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20 says, did you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God? You are not your own. You were bought for a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 says, I also want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety. I want to ask you this question. If you were going to entertain Jesus, how would you dress? If you were going to host a dinner party and Jesus was on the list to show up, how would you dress? Young ladies, you're here today. Teenagers, you're here today. How would you dress if you're going to entertain Jesus? The third key to freedom from pornography is this. You need to starve out lust. Write this down. Whatever you starve dies and whatever you feed lives. Did you know that? Whatever you starve dies and whatever you feed lives. Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 17 says, So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desi desires of sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. There's this conflict that is happening in the spirit realm today. And your, your, your flesh, that sinful nature that is inside of each one of us is constantly at odds, fighting. Spiritual nature. Constantly at odds. And there is this battle that is taking place. And whatever, I promise you this, whatever you starve in that battle will overtake the other and whatever you whatever you I, I want to sorry I want to rephrase that whatever you, you whatever you feed in that battle will overtake the other whatever you starve will die the other will win whatever you starve dies and whatever you feed lives Paul says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 he says put it to death somebody said kill it <laughs> put it to death therefore whatever belongs to your earthly nature somebody say kill it Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, and greed. Somebody say, kill it. You have to kill it. You have to put it to death. And the quickest way to put something to death is to starve it out. Quickest way to put some type of, of sin propensity in your life to death is to starve that. Don't place yourself in a position to compromise. Don't put yourself in the bakery looking at all those donuts when you're on a diet. Right? I like the cream filled chocolate covered ones. Jesus. 
Can we just stop for a moment and thank God for donuts? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Starve out lust. Fourth one is this. You have to flee from sexual sin. Don't play around with it. Don't entertain it. Flee, run. Somebody say run. Run, run from it. The way Joseph did with Potiphar's wife. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 18 says, flee from sexual sin. All, all the sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Romans chapter 13, verse 14 says this, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make now provision to the flesh in regards to its lusts. Flee, run. Don't dabble in it. My grandma used to say it like this. I, you think the grass is greener on the other side of the fence and then you get over there and you find out there's a septic tank that's loose, right? Leach field's messed up. Ugh. Some of you are starting to discover this in your life that the grass isn't greener on the other side. Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 10. 12 and 13 says, so if you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. There is no temptation that has ceased us by which, but, but that which is common to man. So you're here today and you're like, well, you know what, Pastor Dylan, I can look just a little bit, I'm fine. I, I, it's like, I have this ability. Listen to yourself. I have this ability to look at things and not lust over it, it's fine. Maybe, maybe this is a propensity for you, so don't even dabble in it. Don't make it or don't develop it into a habit or a propensity that, that you could stumble to or in fact, make someone else in your home stumble with. You fathers. I say this today because we've had issues where in moments I sat in, in an office with a student who was trying to push through, trying to, to succeed, trying to develop a relationship with God and dad's at home looking at pornography. Jesus. Flee from sexual sin. You have to set up boundaries. You have to flee. You have to starve out lust. You have to bring it into the open. And the fifth one is this. Worship team, if you'll come. Fifth one is this. It takes the power of almighty God. Not only is our job as followers of Christ to, to starve out that lust and to, to release that lust and to keep it away and, and keep our distance from it and not entertain it and flee from it when it gets close to us, but it takes the power of God. It really does. If we could do it our own, we would have already done it, right? If we could put these things, these systems in place to keep us successful, Christians and keep us successful from looking at these things, then where would the God factor come in? The truth is we can't do it without him. You're here today and maybe you have an addiction to pornography or alcohol. Maybe you have an addiction to cigarettes. Maybe you ha have an addiction to food. Maybe you have an addiction to swearing. Maybe you have an addiction to anger and you don't know any other way. And it feels good to release your anger feels good to, to get aggressive with your children or it feels good to get aggressive on, on the playground at school. I wanna tell you guys this right now today. It's gonna to take the power of God to release those addictions that we have in our lives. And the only way to do that is if we agree to these first four things and we repent of our sins. So you're here today and, and you're like, Pastor Dylan, I, I really think that there's this. I think there's two people two groups of people in this place. Because women, we aren't, we aren't don't, let, me, let me go back for just a moment. I'm gonna give you these two groups of people. I, I wanna say this to the ladies, you're not exempt from this. Even though men have a 543% more chance of looking at pornography than you do, it is still lust when you are watching Channing Tatum's body on Facebook, somebody fly across Facebook in a photograph and you take a second look. Well, I wish my husband looked like that. That's lust. Or stopping at the, the card section at Walmart and you pick up a Hallmark card that has some man on it. 
Come on. And you stop and you look, you take a second thought. Let me just take a gander for a moment and just, let, me just, let me just peek real, real fat. Oh, that's, that's pleasant to look at. And then you go on and get that birthday card that you love, right? I just gotta pick out the per- first, most perfect birthday card. I look at this guy's muscles while I'm doing that. Jesus, there is such a thing as soft pornography. And I think, I think they're, they're probably, I couldn't tell you because I'm not a woman, thank Jesus. But I would say that there's probably more of an issue for women looking at those types of things and not learning to bounce their eyes the same way than you think. And I wonder if your marriage isn't where it's supposed to be, ladies, because you keep comparing him to that Hallmark card at Walmart. We're all in this thing together and we all should understand how significant this issue is. We, we heard it in the statistics. This is a serious issue. And it's a serious issue for our children and our children's children. And if we can't create a dynamic factor of raising our kids better than that, of raising our kids better than that, then they have no chance. No sin will enter the kingdom of heaven, none. Stop dabbling in it. Stop playing with your eternity. Stop jumping out without a parachute and hoping somebody's gonna give one to you. Jesus. It takes the power of God. Second Corinthians, we said that it takes to be, to be free, it takes taking every thought captive. But in John chapter eight, verse 36, so if the son sets you free, somebody say this with me, say it with me, you are free indeed. Maybe you're here today and you see no end. You see no end in sight. This addiction, you've just been battling and you've been fighting and it's something that you went over for a couple weeks and then you find yourself back in it and then you're like, man, I'm gonna. You stop making promises that you can't keep and start letting God intervene. So if God sets you free, you are free indeed. If God could deliver Joe Oden from a lifestyle of drugs and alcoholism, how come God cannot deliver you from an addiction to pornography? Jesus, can we close our eyes? Jesus, you see every person in this room. God, you see every individual in this room and you see their propensities to sin. God, you see what they struggle with or what they have tendencies to struggle with the most. God, maybe it's, maybe it's a homosexual tendency. God, maybe there's someone in this room today that has a lust and, or some type of fetish with something, Lord, that they feel like is okay to dabble in and play with and entertain. And God, today, we've put all of those pretenses and all those misconceptions to rest, Lord. Your word has shined light on this particular issue, on this particular topic. And Lord, today, if we walk out of the doors of this building, having heard your word and not leaned to change, and God not allowed you to work. We've spat upon the cross. We've ignored the gospel. And Lord, some of us today, we preach this message of the gospel and we take it into our workplaces and yet in the deepest, darkest places of our lives, we don't trust it. So Lord, today I pray for victory. God, I pray for freedom to be in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here now. In this moment, we welcome you in to shine light. Every head bow and every eye close. I wanna speak to two people groups today. Every head bow, nobody looking around. This is so, it's embarrassing for us because 
I think we, I think we believe if somebody finds out, if my spouse finds out my life is over, I think that we believe if somebody finds out about this sin, they'll think I'm a, a pervert or something. And today, will you just press past your pride and your so-called dignity and will you let Jesus in? Would you let him lead you to a life of repentance? His kindness leads us to repentance. Would you be a man? Would you be a woman after God's own heart? And be honest with yourself. So you're here today and you're like, Pastor Dylan, I have an issue completely. If that's you, every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to do this. I just want you to lift your head. If, if that's you, lift your head and make eye contact with me. Every head on this platform bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around, no one looking around. And if that's you and you have an issue, just make eye contact with me for a moment. That's all I'm asking. Be brave enough, be honest enough. You can put your heads down. If you've already made eye contact with me and I've acknowledged you, if you have an issue, looking at pornography, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna let this play out for, for about 30 more seconds. Every head bowed, nobody looking around unless you're making eye contact with me so that I know where you're at. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, I see those heads. I see those eyes, Lord. You can put your head down. Some of you are so ashamed that you can't even make, make eye contact with me. You're hurting so bad. Pastor Dylan, you won't understand. I understand more than you think. Every head bowed and every eye closed still. Jesus. Thank you. You can put your head down. Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Even in the balcony.
whether or not you've looked, whether or not you've dwelled. you forward in just a moment. Don't freak out and don't tremble, okay? I want to ask too this question. If you're here today and you're like, Pastor Dylan, I have not put up any safeguards in my house. There's no filter, no accountability software on my devices or my computer. We can help you with that. On your paper right now, if you'll look at this, at the bottom where it says tools, I want, I want to share this with you. Don't freak out by the cost, okay? These are three accountability softwares that I refer, units of software that I refer to, to parents and um, teenagers. And here's what, what happens. CovenantEyes.com, there is a personal monthly fee that you can use that allows you to have filters built in and you will also get updated reports of who's looking at what on your computer. If there is something to, that, that runs across in a word search or anything like that, it will keep you informed. Um, so move on, there's also a family pack and I'll explain that in just a moment because many of the family packs are very much alike. X3 Watch is the, the accountability software that I use and particularly, I think, is that the one you use? You use the bottom one, okay. Pastor Josh uses Accountable to You. Um, these, these patches of software, what they're designed to do is to replace your, your mobile browser on your phone or your tablet or your device. And, and what it does is based on what type of package you order. How many know you can't place a price tag on somebody's eternal well-being, right? We don't wanna play around with this. So you're here today and you're like, Pastor Dylan, I don't know if I, I've been proactive with this. I really don't know if I have. I have, I have kids that are coming up through elementary that are with Pastor Josh and I have kids that are with you on Wednesday nights. And I have, I have students that I just don't know what they look at. And I'm not here to, to shame you, but I'm telling you this, we have to fix that. Pastor Josh and I are not going to be the only ones that care about this issue for your kids. You have to care about this. This has to be a priority to you. And so these packages that you can look at, I will tell you this, X3 Watch is free and I have it and my accountability partner is my wife, okay? And what happens is if there's anything questionable that I put in, a, in my web browser on my phone or my tablet, or, and actually here at the office, we have, we have filters and things like that that let Lisa know what, what the pastoral staff has been looking at. Um, and they just keep us accountable. And so this accountability software is here for you to be proactive with. Do you understand that? Okay. The one that I use is X3 Watch and it's free because I only have one accountability partner. The person that I'm accountable to is the one I don't wanna disappoint the most and that's my wife, amen? And so if you're here and you're like, man, I, I just want something simple. And, here, and here's what, what X3 Watch does for me. I can look at anything I want. I really can it doesn't have any filters on it. I can look at anything. I can browse anything and find anything on the internet, but my wife will know about it. And so if you're the kind of person, maybe you don't really, maybe this isn't an issue for you. This would be perfect for you to just replace Safari with, or I, I don't know what the Android search engine is, Google or whatever, but it will replace that as an icon. You'll actually shut off Safari on your phone or your device. And it'll replace that as your search engine from here on out. And so I've had this, I, I've had this accountability software for a really long time on my devices and it's been something that my wife has, I have to type in her email and so she gets reports um, on a regular basis to, to let her know the things that I've been looking at and to keep her in, in, in tune with what's going on in my, my life. And so I, I want you to understand this is very, very important. Be proactive with this. Don't be reactive. Don't go into repair mode, go into prepare mode. Amen. 
So you're here today, and I, I, let's just say this. If you're here today and you're like, man, I haven't been proactive enough, raise your hand, that's you. Thank you so much for, for, for just revealing that. Raise your hand one more time, keep it up. It's all right. There was a time in my life where I wasn't pro, proactive enough. Okay, keep it, keep it up, I just wanna keep saying. Okay. You look around you and you see people that are just like you that have, are just like, man, these are startling statistics and I am, this makes me nervous. I don't want you to live in fear, but I want you to live in caution, amen? And if you're gonna fear anything, fear the Lord in this. So here's what we're gonna do. Church, where we stand, we're gonna close out the last 10 minutes of this service with some prayer, some sincere prayer about some of these issues. And I want you to not be naive to the fact that your child, your son or daughter could be looking at pornography without you knowing that. I think what was the statistic? 71% of students keep pornography or their status online away from their parents. They keep it hidden. Your student could very well be that one. Your student could very well fall in that percentile. So don't be naive to that, that, well, my kid's holy and they're just perfect and they have a halo and, and it's awesome. And I love my kid. Don't, don't be naive to the fact that your child is human too, right? And let's start raising them. Like we raise them to tithe, let's raise them to have holy eyes, right? Let's raise them to live righteously before the Lord. So you're here today and you're like, Pastor Dylan, I haven't been proactive enough. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna call both groups forward at the same time. And men and women, if you're one of the ones that had an addiction, you need to speak to your spouse. But if you're here today and you were one of the ones that say, I'm not proactive enough, and I need to even pray that God, God willing, my child has not stumbled yet. We need to come forward and do that right now. So if you haven't been proactive enough, or you have had an addiction, a pre-existing addiction. Let's straighten both of those things out right now in the same altar call. Will you come right now? Will you come?